welcome back so this is a job that I've been working on this week I was on site on Monday commissioning uh, Pegasus Life it's a residential um, home and we've got air source heat pumps on the roof and we've got the boiler plant the boiler plant the heating plant in the basement so let's just have a quick look at I'm connected to it remotely by a, um, a SIM card, GSM SIM card with a M2M Pro router and the SIM card is by a company called Spitfire, my company I used to use for fixed IP SIM cards was starting to get rather expensive so I moved to Spitfire and that's proven to be a lot cheaper and it's also securer in the respect that we don't use the standard ports so for example the station uh, which would be 4911 I'm, on this particular card I'm using 8000 on the platform uh, which would be normally be 5011 I'm using 8001 and I'm connected to it at this moment in time uh, remotely to the site so let's look at the wire sheet of the logic first. This is all completed now, and like I said, it's all been commissioned. It's a bit slow this side because of the data. I think it's on Vodafone and the signal is not that good on site. So I've got about two bars if I'm lucky, but it, it does work. And um, it's got a touch screen on the panel that they can view the information but I also send all this information back to our main cloud server and they've got a screen there that they can view in fact let me see if I can find that for you yes it's here it's going to expire in 30 seconds so let's just so this is on our server now and all the points via Niagara Networks going up to our server and you can see your air source heat pumps here on the roof and you can see our primary side which is feeding the air source heat pumps our secondary side we've got a buffer vessel in fact we've got two but I'm only showing one here the secondary side pumps feed the heat HIUs, heat independent units, heat interface units. So they are feeding these here. Now we've got our pumps going up to our heat pumps, through our heat pumps, back down. Now it's splitting to this side, which is the, let's call it the landlord side. It's not the residents these are the rooms for the residents the HIUs and this feeds the furniture store kitchen diner drawing room reception treatment room gym office and guest suite so that's your HIUs for each individual ones of them um, sorry th these are apartments here at the bottom on the ground floor one two three four five six seven and then this HIU feeds all this lot here with the underfloor heating and then we are controlling the speed of the pumps with a differential pressure transducer and a set point there hence that's why the speed is only 83 so these units can actually these HIUs can actually shut down and if they shut down pressure will build I will, I will lower the the pump speed and then we've got a, a like a PIC valve, PICV valve, pressure independent control valve at the top of the riser anyway so that if I'm not fast enough to, to slow down the um, flow and return will not deadhead. Um, like I said we've got two buffer vessels but we've only got one set of temperature sensors so these are exactly the same as the other buffer vessel we've only got one three port valve as well which is this one here um, which is currently at 47 and then I basically made graphs 
just make it a little bit more friendly for them to see so I made graphs of everything so that's the primary pump section you can click on these up here and highlight them all if you want to it gets a little bit messy to be honest that's the primary pumps let's just save that yes we do have primary pump one in fault we know about that it's um, sorted it out checked it on site and it's definitely a faulty pump so that needs replacing um, again I can control on static control speed or I can control on pressure and at the moment this one's controlled on pressure hence you haven't got your plus and your minus at the side here so it's pressure control speed for their secondary pumps where on the primary pumps it's set point control speed purely because of that other pump has got an issue at the moment so until we can sort out the other pump we don't want to be running on pressure hence static control speed and you can set in the, the speeds here on the static controls uh, the pump stages is on temperature differential so at the moment we're using three stages and if the temperature is uh, goes below that then we're naturally on three if it goes above that we will actually drop it down I believe I need to check the logic again I wrote the logic but uh, and we'll look at that in a minute on the logic so I could be wrong there I know it works so that's the main thing the rise of pressure which I'm just waiting for it to pop up so that's our rise of pressure 4 bar or thereabouts 3.92 bar our buffer tanks come on it's normally faster than this I think it's because I'm recording at the same time buffer tanks and then of course we've just got the weather and then we've got the time clock and then we've got reset logic below so we can reset any any faults and of course on every page we have got these bottom navigation to show us what's going on with the system and the temperatures and any alarms that that, that would happen critical alarms that is right let's go back to that is my again on my server so we don't want that one and Pegasus let's connect into there I must admit I do have a slow speed here let me put you on pause so this is the touch screen view on the control panel on site it's not as in depth it's just basically one page well it's two pages one's for the pumps but this is the main control screen that they would see on site on the panel but they won't be going in that room very very often also the room temperature is 35.4 uh, they've still got some pipe lagging to do so that's why it's still high but this panel uh, control panel is on the ground floor and you don't see the heat pumps all we do is give the heat pumps an enable signal and we know whether they are in fault that that's it as far as heat pumps are concerned the SOC pumps on the roof but we do control the three port valve for the buffer vessel and we do control the pump speeds like I said primary at the moment are in a, a fixed speed we've got a problem with primary pump one and the secondary pumps are using pressure control at the top of the riser which currently is 
bar and the set point is 3.9 hence that's the reason why we're at 83 percent so that's that bit not really a lot going on to be honest with you so let's now look at the logic so these are the driver um the logic sorry so the safety buffer heating valve frost protection not that the space temperature frost protection will work due to the space temperature being in the boiler room so we won't be really using that it, it runs 24 7 on the time clock anyway because it's providing heat to the hius which also is the hot water for the apartments as well as the heating so the system will run 24 7. they've got the lthw primary pumps and they've got the secondary pumps so with the LTHW primary pumps, these are the ones for the loads. So I'm looking at that temperature, 64.6, and my set point's at 64. I'm at 50% at the moment, because I'm, I'm really close to um, set point, and the minimum that I've put is 50%, so it never goes down to zero. Minimum is 50. And at the moment, we've got a T stat with a set point and a differential which has given us a one there we've got this one here with a T uh, another T stat with a set point and a differential which is given us a one there and then we always have a one in there so we add it up and it's three loads majority of this has been tried and tested on another property and we've used the same coding so we know it works it really wants three pumps all the time but if we do lower the set point down, then eventually this will, well, the set point 60 minus 40. So that's going to be 20. So that needs to be 20 before we go down to two pumps. But because of the height of the building, I know it's only like four floors or, or three floors ground and three floors. Uh, and the heat pumps are up on the roof. We really need those heat pumps with the right flow to them otherwise they'll go into fault so we would never go ever go down to two pumps that's impossible it would never happen really we will always go to three pumps because the HIUs require 60 degrees we're giving it 64 at the moment we we couldn't really lower that set point down any more than what we've already got so that's controlling the loads using pump rotation and the speeds are here for the pumps which are fixed speeds 85 90 and 100 and you can see that we can use static control or we can use pressure control uh, this is set to static control so it's using the fixed values that can be inputted that's why that is now giving us a null value and if we use static control that would change to this value here so it would run this pump at 82.7 that at 82.7 and that at 82.7 is now just changed to 8 well we're fixed speed for the primary to the air source heat pumps the secondary side is exactly the same except this time we are using pressure control for the speeds and you can see that all these in switches there are all true coming from the pressure control is saying true and that is the uh, differential pressure that's coming in at the moment um, this one is again down to loads and we will always same same logic but we'll always be using three pumps but we could lower that 60% down and we could just go to two pumps but at the moment we are using three pumps so over 40 percent so i'm just trying to work out my control variable there which is the pump speeds there so that's my control variable for that system like i said this has been tried and tested and it does work and uh, I'm not envisaging any changes to the logic at all. Differential pressure. So I made my own folder for differential pressure. Put the differential 
a DP transducer into there and the set point and that's giving me my pump speeds out and then I've just got a little bit of logic there in case we've got a, a differential change which we five because this was done in KPA and it's now in bar I really need to change that to five down to something like 0.5 because we are we're, we're working in bar so point point five then we'll do a an alarm so let's just change that to point five that's that done uh, buffer so we're enabled we've got our safety control so we're just using a normal PI loop and that's our buffer valve and we're just monitoring the temperature so we're taking the minimum temperature of all them three sensors in the buffer these three here and we've got the set point of 64 so we're trying to maintain 64 which we are maintaining 64 so that's easy enough that's at 38 percent at the moment safety just normal emergency stop pressurization the fire alarm gives me one for vent and one for safety output <coughs> we're using some dim modules as you can see for the inputs and if we look inside one of the dim modules these are the works on voltage depending on how many inputs are on or off and I get a voltage back so I know how many inputs are on and off and that is the logic for it uh, linear block modulus subtract T stat add numeric bit and numeric bit and numeric bit and numeric bit and a divide a divide and a divide and basically 7.2 volts or what we've got at the moment 9.72 so 9.72 is all of them on, 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 and they're all giving us a 1, so they're all on. These are my total inputs for the site, so that's your max 36 inputs, outside air temperature sensor, space, which is actually the plant room space, the LTHW flow and return for the primary, the secondary, that's spare, that's the reason why it's minus 3.2, it's not being used. Um, yeah top of the block pressure uh, these are our dim modules so we're using one universal input to monitor four digital inputs the buffer tanks another dim module air source heat pump alarm and that spares there these are our dim modules so that's each dim module so dim module one those are my inputs from there dim module two three four and five and then we've got another isma 8u where we're using them temperatures there sixty four point one so I'm just checking sixty four point one is mid there yeah it's slightly different but there's those temperature sensors there for them um outputs so you've got them digital outputs here so heat pump enable and then we've got the secondary pumps there three and we've got three primary and then we've got the speeds for them and then we've got the analog output for the three port buffer and that's basically it there's not really a lot to it and I don't think I can think of anything else I take all these points back and as you've seen from the graphic um, display them to the client I don't think there's anything else to really show you with this like I said the ports are different so the platform port instead of 5011 it's 8001 I'm using the Spitfire so I can use one IP address and I can have lots and lots of stations I use four ports per station or per controller 8000 
which is the station, 8001 which is the platform, uh, 8002 which is the web page for the viewer uh, on the panel and 8003 which is my connection into my M2M Pro router. Naturally the next station was going to be 8004, 8005, 8006, 8007, the next one 8, 9, 10, 11 and so on. So one IP address, lots of different controllers. The advantage, the disadvantage is you've got to keep a spreadsheet. You, you're never going to go in on 4911 or 5011 for the platform. You are going to go into your own port. The advantage of that is security. So anyone who knows Niagara, Trillium, knows, oh, well, the standard port's 4911 or 4911. So I'm, I'll come to site. Not my job. I want to get in there long as I know the username and password which the client would normally tell them that because it's in the documentation so you've got a third another party coming to site another engineer coming to site to work on the system not you and they say well the username's this the password's this can you get into the controller they then try 4911 no 1911 no okay we get platform 5011 no 3011 no no, sorry, I can't get in. End of story. So, unless they know what the port numbers are, they will not really be able to get into the system. So that's an extra security benefit. Now, with the touch screen on this particular job, I used the second port on the Mac 36 controller Ethernet port and I set that as to 10.0.0.125 so the touch screen is actually using port 80 on 10. sorry using port 8002 but the in on touch screen that has been done for this job it automatically logs you in and you can't see any of that without actually going in and looking at the password but even if they knew what the http port was they still don't know what the other two ports are which has added security in my in my view so that's it basically your lthw pumps just using pump rotation and you can see the fault coming in from that one there so that's it's in AND gate there, so hence we're not using that pump, even though uh, we've got a DP true on it. And the reason for that is the pump is actually working, it's in hand, but it won't work in auto because of some issues on site with the wiring. So that's the hence why we've got the DP there. But we've also got a DP across that one as well. So I think it's just one DP anyway for all of them. But because of the fault, we are not running that pump. Hence, that's why it's disabled on this output here. Um, I think that is it. I don't think there's really anything else. That's the secondary pumps is the same. We've done the heating valve. We've done the safety. We've done all the dim modules there, and we've looked in a dim module. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.